Hey, folks, we're back at you here. The dollar has lost 99% of its value, and this is what is leading to the erosion and de decimation of your purchasing power in the currency that you're holding, currently holding. It's eroding each and every day. We're going to be showing you that on the program here today. Is my money safe sitting in the bank? Well, gosh, not according to a fellow that just called in here on Friday night. My goodness, folks, anything more than $250,000 is certainly not insured by the FDIC. But additionally, the FDIC does not have the money to bail out the banks. They're broke. And we're going to explain the reason why. So we're going to talk about silver. Why do you like it? Um, and then the gold price currently is 100 times what it was back in 1933. So in 1933, an ounce of gold was $20.67. So there's a reason why the, that uh, people around the world, as well as central banks around the world, are buying silver and gold. Much less talk about silver, though. I wonder why. They're telling us the truth. Didn't India just finish buying 3,625 tons of silver in 2023? Well, what's up with, with, uh, with India? Well, they're celebrating a holiday over there. And every year they celebrate the same holiday. And uh, it's called Diwali. And the, the Indian people, they got it right. When they give a gift, they give a gift that lasts. They give gifts of gold and silver because they understand that that is money. So people here in the United States, we're not qu so quite up on that yet. But the Western currencies are in trouble and they need to be reset. So if you have a lot of silver, guess what? You'll be calling the shots and that's how the new system is going to be ushered in, folks. People are commenting that I'm not putting any money myself in the stock and bond markets. Well, geez, quite frankly, I don't trust them anymore. And you shouldn't either. A problem with facing the banks right now is a lack of liquidity. So let's take a look at what's happening on the U.S. debt clock. So, again, if we go down here and uh, can you see on my screen, you're going to see 20 trillion 641 down here. That's the total amount of money that is actually inside the M2 money supply checkbook. OK, now the checks and the account that's uh, the balances that are showing outstanding that you're holding are in excess of six hundred twenty three trillion dollars. Of course, we're going to have to add to that the national debt of $34 trillion. So then aren't we currently up to $657 trillion of debt? Okay. Plus what you have is your claims against the M12 money supply. So if you take a look at the $20 trillion over here, that's all the money that's in the checking account. But you and the rest of the country that's working on the US dollar, we have $623,000 of claims against that $20 trillion. Is this making sense? So does it make a lot, a lot of sense to put your money in the bank at this point in time? So I'd like to make the differentiation between what is safe and what is not safe. Obviously, cash deposits and securities are two completely different things. But I would say that one holds a lot more risk than the other. But let's talk about the risks that are involved in holding your money in a bank account. There are two types of risk with cash deposits. First of all, is you're holding it. Someone else is holding your money. So you have something called counterparty risk. And secondly, every kind of bank has some kind of deposit insurance. Ours is through the, the Federal Deposit Insurance Corporation. Well, let's take a look at the health of the FDIC. Not real good. One of the fellows in our group works for the FDIC, and he says, Ted, there simply is no money down there. They have something called a DIF or a dif, uh, dif, uh, deposit insurance fund, and the amount of money that's inside the deposit insurance fund is far less than what it would take to bail out even one bank. So they're woefully undercapitalized, severely under underpriced for the risk they are assembly, assuming and behind closed doors, they have admittedly said it, and there's a tape of this out there, talking about how the Gov Board of Governors, the Federal Reserve Bank, has admitted behind closed doors that they do not have the money to back up the claims that you think you have against that. So the smart people right now, like the people in India and some of the smart people around here, but they're only one half of one percent. So if you're listening to this program and you're one of the one half percent, thanks yourself very lucky, very fortunate, because you're one of the ones that are going to make it through the other side. Now, one of the problems we're having right now is absolutely trying to find constitutional uh, money. I'm talking about gold eagles, silver eagles and constitutional money, meaning dimes, quarters, half dollars and dollars that were struck prior to 1965. There's very little bit left right now, folks. The orders are flying in. We just took an order on Friday for over $800,000. People know what's going on. So if you can find that recording of the behind closed doors meeting the Federal Reserve had, somebody snuck out of there with, certainly would like to, um, to share it with everyone. So the FDIC, they, they, what they do is they impose upon the banks certain what are called reserve liquidity ratios. Now, during COVID, the reserve liquidity ratio was zero, which meant that all the deposits that the banks had 
could be invested into the stock market and the bond markets. And that was because of Bill Clinton repealing the Glass-Steagall Act, which originally separated the, the commercial banks from investment banks so that banks that were in the business of lending money weren't allowed to speculate in the stock market anymore after the big uh, Great Depression. So the Glass-Steagall Act basically stopped commercial banks from getting involved in the stock market. However, Bill Clinton reversed that, uh, I believe it was in 2010. So now, what, oh, what else, what else happened in 2010? What else happened in 2010? How about the, the, um, the Dodd-Frank Act? The Dodd-Frank Act placed the derivative holders as a, as a supreme, <laughs> supreme lien holder on the accounts that you and I have in our banks. So when we put, in, when we put our money in the bank, okay, through fractional reserve banking, we are then investing in the bank, and that's why we pay a small return, okay? But in this particular case, with the laws that were just passed in 2010, it gives the banks the ability to what's called bail in our accounts, meaning that if they get in trouble, they can take our accounts and make it theirs. So we had discussed what's happening before as far as the, the battle between Keynesian economics, which is all about feeding the world with one piece of pie. No matter how big the world gets, you just have to make this pie slices just a little bit thinner, okay? As opposed to Austrian monetary economics, which is God's money, which is gold and silver. And we're returning back to that. And what you're seeing right now is all the turmoil that's happening right now is this big Goliath battle going on between Keynesian economics, trying to hold on to last vestiges of power, but they're being pulled out by the short hairs. And so the Keynesian economic model represented by the Bank for International Settlements, the BIS.org, is the company, the sole company that provides all the currency to all the banks around the world. Isn't that wild? So if they decide they want to withdraw the currency or add to the currency or whatever else, it's completely up to them. So in 1965, they wound up taking the money out of her money because in 1965, there was no more silver left in her dimes, quarters, half dollars and dollars. So even though the Constitution says Article 1, Section 10, OK, the Constitution says that that no state shall make anything other than gold and silver money. OK, so any talk about a particular state coming up with their own money, I would have to discount that according to the, the Constitution. The people that framed the Constitution were very, very smart people, folks. They thought of it all. So I'm telling you here, folks, the banks are failing, and I'm going to explain it more in detail. We're in a rising interest rate environment. So the biggest problem with the banks is they lend long-term, say a 30-year loan, but they fund the loan short-term, okay? So they've already lent the money out, and what they try to do then is they try to get a higher interest rate than what you're paying. So a 30-year loan would typically higher, carry a higher interest rate than a six-year uh, note, okay? So they, they tie you up in a 30-year loan, say at uh, 5 or 6%, and they're borrowing money supposedly short-term for 2 or 3% because the rates are supposed to be higher the longer you go out on the year co yield curve. You ever heard of that before? So as the interest rates come down, okay, the banks wind up uh, making money. Now, the banks are never interested in paying off these loans. That's how they survive. They survive off the cash flow. They're going to eat uh, steak that night or eat uh, jelly beans. So the more the debt that they keep in the system, the, the higher the, the standard of living they can have. And guess what? The more, the more money they have in the system, the higher standard of living we can have, at least for a temporary period of time. So they never intend to pay off these loans, folks. But what is the rule that they put to you? Pay your loans on time. Get, stay out of debt. Well, the way you stay out of debt, I guess, is you pay the loans on time. That's what they need. They need the cash flow. So the banks are always in debt. They want you out of debt. You get it? They want your purchasing power in their pocket. You understand how that's working? So if you're shopping around for a place to put your deposit, say, in a bond, and the, the current interest rate environment is 3%, and somebody's offering you 5%, you're going to want to move that money from the 3% to the 5%, right? So in doing so, does that mean that the 5% bond is worth more than the 3% bond? Until maturity, the answer is yes. But the total amount of money collected on that bond to maturity is going to be greater than the 3% bond at 5%. So as the interest rates go up, the, the value of the bond portfolio goes down. But again, as the interest rates go up, what happens to the depositors that put the money in the bank for the, for the 30 year loan to be funded? Are they going to take it out as the interest rates go up? Now, as they take the money out of the bank and the reserve liquidity ratio is zero, how many people have to take their money out of the bank before the bank's upside down? Zero, right? 
So after COVID was over, the Federal Reserve, the, the FDIC, then increased the, the reserve liquidity ratio to currently just 1.67%. Folks, they're only keeping a dollar and 67 cents out of every $100 that you deposit in the bank. Are you still comfortable with leaving money in the bank? I'm suggesting that you leave just enough in the bank for two to three months expenses. The rest of it, you got to get out of the system, folks. Anything that's denominated in dollars is going to be falling. You need to be holding the money of your country. So if, again, if you're in the United States, it's American silver eagles, American gold eagles, and constitutional silver. If you're in Australia, you have your uh, sovereign currency. If you're in Canada, you have yours. Or if you're in the UK, you have your current uh, uh, currency. Okay. So the money is what you want to be holding because the currency is what's issued against it. At this point in time, you never want to hold the currency of a warring country. You don't know who's going to win and who's going to lose. Besides, wars are very, very expensive. Think of the collateral damage. Think about people that are coming home that served in the war. Now they're going to be collecting a lifetime of uh, disability benefits. So the devil's in the details. And what we're finding now, we are in an interest rate, rising interest rate environment constantly rising interest rate environment. We're going to show you some uh, some some scales and we're going to show you some uh, some charts on that so you can understand. So now as interest rates go up, two things happen to the bank's deposits. The customers are going to start withdrawing their money, which leaves the banks in trouble, right? And then the low interest rate accounts, they put it wherever the, the people are going to be moving out to higher interest rate accounts, but probably not with your bank. Secondly, the value of the loans at the fixed interest rate is going down, right? So the value of the loans are going down and the assets are going out. Why? Because the Federal Reserve raised the interest rates. Now, the banks need to go back to the Federal Reserve and say, look, you guys caused this mess. You're going to have to help us out now. You're raising the interest rates. You knew we were borrowing short term. Now we got to fund it long term. Now the cost of funding the debt is greater than what it is we're making on the debt that we're servicing. Whew, do you see the problem? OK, so at any rate. When I get my vibe board, I'll be able to explain this phenomenon a little bit more uh, in depth to you. So depositors coming in wanting to deposit money, withdraw money, move to another bank, yielding a higher rate of interest. And 1.67% is all that the federal banks are required to hold of your deposits. I think that's a slap in the face. That means they can lend out 98.33% of all the money that is that, uh, that you've uh, that you've lent into the banks. The Federal Reserve pumps liquidity into the banks to keep them liquid. But that liquidity comes at a price because every dollar that's brought that's brought into existence is brought in with interest attached to it as well. So keep in mind what the, is blowing this bubble up and up and up. OK, and when it collapses, nothing is going to go outside the bubble. But there are two small asset categories inside the bubble that are going to explode in value. That's what's going to suck up all the purchasing power. So the purchasing power is finite. It's going to shift into gold and silver. Take my word on it, folks. We're going to show you more graphs here until you understand. So the bank's assets become worth less and less until the, and the liabilities, they keep going. They're not going away. The banks still have to, to uh, provide the, the funding for these loans that are outstanding and service them. So let's take a look here. The interest rates are risen for banks. And that's just one bank. Interest rates are rising around the world, folks. OK, because it's taking more and more of the currency to get less and less value out of it because they've inflated this thing. Absolutely smithereens. So let's take a close look at the 10 year yield right now. Now, the 10 year yield, the the, uh, the 10 year yield is supposed to have a lower interest rate or a higher interest rate than the two year. OK, so currently, if you want to borrow money for 10 years, you're going to pay four point four percent. But let's take a look at this. OK. If you take, remember Powell said, well, we're going to keep the interest rates the same. Well, didn't he say that around February? Well, what actually happened when he said we're going to keep the interest rates the same? They dropped the interest rates. And what that is, that's called a pivot. Okay. And the people in the know, they see that. And that's why there's a run on gold right now. Because Rafi Farber's talked about this. Lynette Zhang has talked about this. Um, uh, Grant uh, Williams has talked about this. Uh, we all know what's going on. So the Fed is lying to you, folks. They're not keeping the interest rates the same. I'm showing you exactly on the graph here right now. Does it look like the interest rates are staying the same? So now let's take a look at the two-year. We should see that the two-year yield, okay? The two-year yield you'll find is higher than the current 10-year yield. So the banks lent the money at 30-year rates, which are more volatile than 10-year rates, okay? 
So they're still trying to fund the 30-year loan with a 10-year uh, bond, but the 30-year uh, mortgage, the 30-year loan has a lot more volatility because over a period of time, it's going to shift more. So now let's take a look at the two-year loan here, the two-year note. 4.75. Now, wouldn't you expect that to be lower than the 4.4? So you see what's happening. The banks are getting squeezed because they're having to pay more and more for shorter and shorter period, a long, shorter and shorter period of term loans. Okay. So this is what's called an inverted yield curve. All right. So um, a special shout out to Steve. Steve is a fellow that called in on Friday and said, look, I really appreciate what you're doing. And he donated $5,000 to help us get the mug program up and running right now. So for a short period of time, you can buy the mugs completely at cost. At cost, go to the website, tedspeaks.net, and look for the web for the mugs there, and you can get them at cost. The only thing you got to pay really is the shipping, and I think it's like six bucks. So you, but the thing is, you order more than one mug, you can get as many mugs as you like, okay? It's only one shipping charge. So... I'd like to thank uh, Steve for, for sponsoring the, the mug program and getting that up. And um, then another fellow named Matt, he's just sponsoring the vibe board for us. These people are realizing the kind of value that we're bringing. And we are not, this is all free for you guys. We are not collecting any money whatsoever. So uh, if we get any kind of marketing support, it's to actually help you br help bring the message out to you guys. And then also to make sure that the stuff that we're using, bring the message to you, is of the latest and highest quality. So we don't have any more technical snafus or whatever. So in the event that you feel compelled or you felt that you've gained some value out of this and you'd like to reach out and help us, if you want to support the marketing efforts, reach out to Nick at tedspeaks.net. If you want to reach out and help with the merchandise, reach out to um, uh, Ben at tedspeaks.net. So anyway, thank you very much for all that you're doing. Did you hear what happened in the Le Tennessee legislature? There's this guy out there and his, his name is called David Weber. Now, David Weber wrote a book called The Great Taking. And I have not read that book, but what I find extremely uncanny is that he and I both seem to have the same mentality and the same thoughts as far as what's happening. But the interesting thing is, remember about two weeks ago, three weeks ago, I was telling you about how the stocks are not owned by you because you don't have a QCIP number on the, on the stock certificates, okay? Remember we talked about how you don't un own the dirt underneath your head because you don't have the word land included in your deed? Well, guess what, folks? I'm not a knucklehead on this because this fella, David Weber, is testifying before, uh, before the Tennessee legislature that what I'm saying is absolutely true. Now, he's not saying that Ted said it was true. He, he's saying that what I'm saying and what I'm telling you is true. Okay? So follow the link at the end. Folks, you, you got, there's really only one thing you can own right now without any counterparty risk, and that is physical silver and physical gold. And of those, you need to own the physical gold and physical silver of your, of your country. Not much time left. We're going to be talking about what's happening with the, uh, with, the, um, with the eclipse coming up tomorrow, tomorrow, 2.23 Eastern Standard Time. We're also going to be talking about over 100 trillion, 100 trillion locust cicadas coming out. Two broods are coming together for the first time in, goodness, generations. And these are going to be coming up out of the ground. Boy, if you're not seeing something biblical here, I don't know. But imagine. Imagine how the world would feel if all of a sudden all the debt is relieved from them because the 13 wealthy families collecting the, 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 the funds that you're paying to service these debts are removed. The BIS is no more. So if the BIS is gone, who do you own the loans to? But if you don't own the loans to anything, what's backing the dollar? Nothing. So we need a new dollar. We need a new currency. And that's what I'm telling you is happening right now. All right. So someone is talking up stocks, bonds, and real estate, and they're not telling you that you actually don't own the stocks, you don't own the bonds, and you don't own the dirt that's underneath the head, your head when you sleep at night. You might want to watch and see what happens to them in the future. I think we're going to see entire industries vanish and only truth come up. And you're right with us, folks. Ted speaks truth and you're right here with us. Thanks for joining us. So let me tell you about a real hot, spicy cocktail right now. I mean, daggone hot. There's a Bloody Mary, folks. So as we're finding out that these, um, that these bonds aren't worth what they're supposed to be worth, the bankers are scattering. The bankers are scared. There's nothing really they can do. There's nothing can stop what is coming. And folks, if you know, you know. And now you know, okay? So I think what we should do is... Uh, Let's put a stick of celery inside this cocktail that they made for themselves. They put all this hot sauce in and everything. 
if there's any remaining honest bankers, let them get out on the salary stick. Otherwise, remove the salary stick and let them all go. It's time for a change in our banking system. If everything runs smoothly, the failed banks will be bailed out and be taken over by larger banks, right? Well, what happens in that regard? Don't we wind up consolidation of power? And as the consolidation occurs, do you get more time or less time with a face-to-face -face with a person to explain your situation? Say, look, I need a little bit more time on this or I need a loan to do that or I'm a little bit slow in the cash flow. I need to factor my receivables. You know, who are you going to talk to about these cases that are outside of what the computer says you can borrow or not borrow and what you have to pay back and when what we're interest rate? Also, where, where you can go, what soda you can have. I mean, we do not want a central bank digital currency and that's not going to happen. Each country will have their own sovereign money. I'm trying to help you understand this so that you go out and get the money of your country before the currency is issued against it. Because once the currency is issued against the money, you're not going to be able to afford the money anymore. It's that simple, folks. This will be simply a flash in the pan and you're going to scratch it. Geez, I wish I'd have paid attention. That's why I'm out here doing this. Come on, it's Sunday night, folks. We already did one this morning for you. Here it is Sunday night right now, but this is a groundbreaking report. We've got a lot of information still to cover right now. So we all know the pandemic and large numbers of people upset the entire commercial real estate market. So people wound up starting working from home, right? So the companies figured, well, gosh, we don't need to keep as many, much, we don't need to rent as much office space. So they start cutting back on office space. So now what happens? Is the desirability office space going up or going down? It's going down, right? As the interest rates go up. So it's costing more to service the debt, but there's less tenants to service the debt. Now, what other collateral damages that we need to talk about? So when you work in a big office building, are you parking somewhere? Are you getting a cup of coffee? Are you going out for lunch? Are you getting some dry cleaning done? Are you maybe picking up some groceries on the way home? What about all the businesses and shops that rely on you going to that office to create velocity of money for them to make a living, get the money all working around in our economy? What happens? What we're seeing right now, folks, is something called reverse velocity of money. We're seeing a huge sucking sound, and it's being sucked down the drain. The more that these smaller banks go out of business, the more the power is consolidated. Because what's happened is the smaller, mid-sized, and regional banks are told, if you want to charter to operate your bank in this area, you have to lend 65 to 70% of your deposit base in commercial-backed mortgage, mortgage uh, CMBS, commercial mortgage-backed real estate, okay? Uh, commercial mortgage bonds. So once they did that and the interest rates were going down, there's, oh, hey, wow, this is a great deal. Break out the champagne. Well, now that the interest rates are going up, then you get whacked with uh, the pandemic. People not going to the office buildings anymore. The whole thing is falling apart. Now there's a bunch of charlatans out there saying, oh, hey, we can repurpose the office building here in the condos. No, you can't. You can't. The plumbing is different. The air ventilation is different. The power consumption is different. The plumbing, everything is different, folks. You can't just do that. I don't know what's going to happen in this regard, but holding commercial back, commercial mortgage back to securities, um, real estate, that's not a game that I want to be into right now. See, the thing is, you want to be at the right place at the right time. When was the right place and the right time for silver and gold? My gosh, it's been a long time. It's been a very, very long time. When was the only two assets left standing in the United States? Silver and gold. We haven't had that here because we haven't had a currency reset yet. Now, when this currency reset happens here, it's going to be a big one, and it could happen Monday. I don't know that it's going to, but there certainly is a whole lot of things adding up. Let me tell you another reason why I think it might be Monday. People are hurting. I'm getting cards and emails. I'm getting letters, phone calls. People out there are struggling. They're hurting. My gosh, there were two people, there were two couples who would go camping with in Alabama. It's 45 minutes away from them. It's 11 hours for us. They canceled because he they both lost their jobs. And now Jerry was trying to pick up some extra work. So they sent him on a 17-hour truck run. The guy, how old is Jerry? Like 70, 78, 68. 60. Oh, it looks like 67, 68. I hope he's not watching this because he looks a lot older than that. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Jerry. Mm -hmm. Sometimes you just got to call the shots the way they are. But anyway, Jerry's now not in good shape. He was out there trying to work a little bit harder to make a little bit money, more money for his family because the cost of everything is going up. And um, look what happened to him. So, folks, getting back to the office buildings, there's no people around the office buildings. There's no traffic, no business, no money for retail space. Think about what the re the uh, the rental uh, are going to go for in that area. So let's suppose it's not just a commercial real estate. Let's suppose it's just a small mom and pop shop 
and maybe they live upstairs and, and they serve coffee or donuts or something out of the bottom of their house. What's going to happen to those people? That's very, that's a shame because what we've done by pricing money extremely cheap, we brought tomorrow's demand into today. It might take five or 10 years to settle that out so that the people that are currently are swallowed the debt at 2%, they're actually able to, earn, to, uh, to absorb that debt and make it part of the regular routine that normalize interest rates. So we've seen all kinds of mispricing and all types of things happening as far as our economy is concerned because of the mispricing of debt. So we're going to see changes in the food, food uh, shops and the, the uh, grocery stores and uh, restaurants. All these supporting industries around the, um, around the, the, uh, the office buildings are going to be suffering. And folks, as it continues to get worse, the demands on the dollar are going to continue to go up. And that $20 trillion that we talked about there in the M2 money supply is going to continue to go down. So the workforce is facing 60% fewer workers. But if you listen to Joe Biden, what is he going to say? Oh, employment is up 300,000. Folks, come on. We got we to gotta use what's up here. Okay. Take a look around. Is, it, is employment bustling right now? Is the stock market valuations really honest? Folks, if you don't see, if you don't see what's going on, I, I, I can't help you. But because you're here, you probably do see what's going on. You just need to have it pointed out to you in a little bit more succinctly than what it is you're seeing right now. So you're going to find that these office building owners are going to go back to the banks and say, here are the keys to the office building. We can't afford the payments anymore because it was never their plan to pay off the office building. It was always their plan to get income out of it. OK, so that rather than taking the income out and paying off the building, which is what they want you to do with your debt, they take the income out of it and they live off of it. All right. So interesting. One hundred and fifty one taxes on one loaf of bread. What do you think is going to happen when the BIS is ultimately removed? Do you think any company stays around forever? Do you think that one company can have the absolute right to create currency, money on this planet that we all have to work for and pay back? Do you think it's right for one company to be controlling all that? Or do you think it's better for each sovereign country to have their own cultures, their own religions, their own customs, and allow them to do what they would like to do with their money? Why put the boot on people's neck to that degree? You guys... You at least were in fat and fat cats, and you just kept putting more and more in pressure. But you didn't realize that all it takes is a little bit of wind, and the rest of us wake up. And now we are waking up, and your day is done. We are going to chase you down in the streets, and we are going to look to lynch you. You have done things to our country, and you have done things to America that absolutely are, are irreprehensible, irre terrible stuff. So the banks that are lending 50, 60, 70 percent on these office buildings, they're going to wind up taking it in the chin. And whose money is that? It's yours, folks. It's yours. Now, it's created. It's sliced and diced. And your dollar that's in the bank has been lent out over a thousand times, over an infinite number of times if the reserve liquidity ratio is zero percent. Because zero, a million times zero is still zero, right? Okay. So if you have 1.67%, what that means is only 1.67% of all depositors have to come in or 1.67 of all deposits have to be removed. And guess what? The bank is then insolvent. Then you go, oh, geez, I didn't know that. Ted should have told me. I am telling you, okay? I am telling you right now. The other side of the coin with the money in your bank, the dispersing power is being eroded because they create more and more of it each and every day. Take a look at the U.S. debt clock. Take a look at how much additional currency they're creating each and every day. That's watering down the soup. You're buying that soup at full cost, but you're getting less and less energy out of it. Okay. So let's move on to the U.S. debt clock and let's talk about the M2 money supply. Let's go back to that for a minute because you're going to see a couple of trends that I think are, are very disturbing. Okay. We're going to see here on the M2 money supply that the amount of M2, the amount of money in the checking account is actually going down. OK, so you see in 20 trillion, 641 billion, 274 billion, million thousands and, and dollars. OK, look how fast that's going down. Now, let's take a look at the M2, uh, excuse me, the currency and credit derivatives, the claims against the M2 money supply. They're going up at a very rapid rate. Right. So the amount in the checking account is going down. The amount of claims against the checking account is going up as well as the amount of debt is over $34 trillion right now. These are theoretical numbers, folks. A billion seconds ago was 1959. A billion hours ago, 
nothing two-legged walked the earth. These are, these are numbers that are completely un, not repayable. So now what we also have is a factor that, that the velocity of money seems to be slowing down. Now that is a real big problem. If you take a look at the V1, the velocity of money, when I get my vibe board up here, I'll be able to pull that up immediately and show you what's going on. Okay. So the velocity of money basically says when you spend, say, $100 in the economy, what is the economic benefit of that? So there was a guy named Barry Levinson who made a film in Baltimore called Tin Men. And they talked about how Barry was going to spend about $20 million making this month, this movie in Baltimore. But said the economic impact of Baltimore was going to be around $200 million. And that is because when he brings that $20 million in here, it's spent on hotel rooms. And the person cleaning the hotel room, maybe they can go out and buy a steak dinner that night. Or the hotel, there's a clerk, can go out and maybe they can make a, a, a rent payment. Or maybe they can go out and, and lease or buy a new car or something. It's called velocity of money. It gets it all spin, spun up, okay? This is Keynesian economics. It's all on credit. It's value. You take a dollar and you multiply the daylights out of it to create, create purchasing power that doesn't even exist, okay? It's watered down purchasing power. So the U.S. government must borrow $100 to pay Social Security, right? Because they don't have the money themselves. They're constantly floating bonds. So it borrows the $100 from an investor, right? And the investor buys that bond. But what does the investor actually get? What is the value of that bond? The $100 that was paid to the person collecting Social Security representing this bond in this particular case, does that have any value on it? He already supposedly had earned that money, right? It's supposed to be kept in Social Security for him, right? Yeah. Uh-huh. No, it's not been. And the cost of everything is going up and these dollars are gone. So what does the guy get in exchange for the hundred dollar bond that he bought that the money was used to give to the guy collecting social security? Is that something you want to invest in? Well, guess what? Guess what? You are, you're investing in that. So as the government becomes poor by increasing the, the uh, quantity of fiat on the planet and the M2 money supply, let's remember a bond is nothing more than a promise to pay. That's it. It has no intrinsic value. It's all based upon the trust and promise of someone. Okay. So if they, quite frankly, if they don't have the, the, the money, they don't have the money. You can't get blood out of a turnip, right? So the extent that the government is getting poor, okay, because the amount of debt is going up and up and up. Relentlessly, not only America, this is a global tr trend right now. It's happening all around the world. And again, you're witnessing Keynesian economics being yanked out. It's run its course. The old guy's dead. Time to get the thread, the guy off of Threadneedle Street. Oh, did Ted say something about Threadneedle's thing? Wonder where the Bank of England is located. Huh. What does the Bible say about it's easier for a man to get through the eye of a needle than uh, how does it go? a rich man to get into the into heaven or something like that? You can probably correct me on that. Some of you, the biblical scholars, and it is Sunday, so we should know that. So human labor, as well as anything that's in supply, which is in demand, which will include silver, which are equities, which are not really in demand right now, because people are waking up to the fact that, again, you do not have a document like this, okay? And on the back of this document, you're going to see that there are actually redemption information here on how to redeem the stock certificates, okay? So do you have any of that now? Oh, just trust me, right? So anyway... So there were three ways that we talked about to be able to own property in the United States of America. It's a land grant, a perfected title, and an eluded deed. Those are the only three. Go to your local real estate um, attorney and ask whether or not that these are things that you can implement. Typically, you have to have your, your, uh, your property free and clear. But supposedly, if you can get one of these types of land ownerships, you will not have to pay property taxes anymore. How interesting is that? So... The financial reset is being ushered in right now. You're seeing the end, of, end throes of it right now. You're going to wake up one morning. It's all going to be over. The new currency will be out. The old currency will be defunct. And it's going to join the, uh, the piles of table of, of fiat, defunct fiat currencies that I have on my tables over here. We're going to show you in just a little bit. So ultimately, all currencies that ever were created, they've all, have exist, they've all gone defunct. The only currencies that haven't gone defunct right now that are fiat are all the currencies currently in use because the whistle hasn't been blown loud enough. But these here represent currencies that I've collected over the years. And these are actually numbered uh, currencies. They all have a unique identifier, unlike the stock certificates that you have. You'll see here in the column, you'll see the, the, uh, the, the bills that are, on, uh, that are turned over and there's nothing printed on the back. That's because those were printed during the Weimar Republic and they actually ran out of ink. So they only printed the bills on one side. 
Additionally, then they started running out of paper because they couldn't create it fast enough because inflation was running at such a high pace. They wound up printing the currency on bamboo. And there are examples inside the Bundesbank in Germany that actually point this out. So the survivors are worth but a tiny fraction of what it is that uh, they were worth. Take this $1 bill here. It's called a certificate, silver certificate, right? It's issued by the United States of America. Who has the silver for that dollar bill that I'm holding right now? I don't have the silver. I guarantee you the person that gave up his silver for that note still doesn't have that silver. So who has the silver? Guess what? The banks have the silver. Let's go to the next one. This is a $5 note. This is another silver certificate, a $5 silver certificate. Somebody gave up $5 worth of silver at the time in exchange for this piece of paper. And now they can't get the, the silver back for the piece of paper. Let's go to the next one. Here's another silver certificate. This is a $1. Look at this one here. One silver dollar payable to the bearer on demand. If I took that in now, would they give me the silver? No, because there's a time frame on it, folks. These bills, they don't last forever. Is a dollar bill going to last as long as an ounce of silver? They're still finding that stuff on the bottom of the Atlantic Ocean. No. Nah. If so, anything happens to silver at all, it gets corroded. It doesn't get corroded. It gets, um, it gets uh, attracts oxygen molecules and gets tarnished. And when it gets tarnished, it actually gains weight. So silver doesn't really disintegrate, not in seawater. So let's take a look at these, some of these other notes here. One that I wanted to show you is a Zimbabwe note. This is a $10 trillion Zimbabwe note that I have here. Do you think that when they first came out with the Zimbabwe dollar that they ever thought, that they would uh, be, be uh, creating a note, one note that would represent 10 trillion of their dollars. What kind of criminality has happened over there? So what has happened recently in Zimbabwe and why is this a very important conversation that we're having tonight? I'm telling you, I've long maintained that as soon as one country's currency becomes gold backed, all the other countries are gonna have to go. And the reason is this, now that Zimbabwe has backed their currency with gold after five o'clock on a Friday, okay, what do you think the other fiat currencies are going to do with the currency that Zimbabwe is backing with gold? Are they going to want to take their currencies from around the world and buy Zimbabwe dollars? If that happens, what happens to the Zimbabwe economy? What happens to the Zimbabwe assets? Goodness gracious. If it's actually convertible, then they come back and get the gold. No, folks, I'm telling you, my gut is telling me that it's about ready to hit the fan. The fact that Zimbabwe has announced, and that's exactly what I thought and why it's whole, uh, had heard, was that once the one currency was announced, Z, the last letter of the alphabet, bingo, all the rest are going to go asset backed. So if you can't get your money out of the bank and in the silver, at least get it out in cash. Go see it. <laughs> Anybody see the lines of silver, uh, uh, lines around the gold, uh, the coin shores and pawn stores lately? Wow, silver shot up just to 2300 bucks, and people are out there ready to sell. They don't quite get it. You wouldn't sell, would you? At $2,300 for gold? Let's talk about that a little bit. If you happen to own a paper note, that was a representation of silver or gold that you actually own. They had gold notes, too. So in 1933, we're in a Great Depression, and we were on a gold standard. So what happened was they decided to to uh, uh, confiscate all the gold because we were on a gold standard at that time, okay? And the government needed to pay its debts, its bills. So they offered the public $20 for the ounce of gold that they had, made it confiscatory, meaning they had to turn it in. And then as soon as they had all that they wanted, they raised the price of gold to $35 and then paid their bills. What did happen to the person that bought it, that sold it for 20? They lost $15 per ounce right off the bat. Isn't that sad? And that's almost 50%. So anyway, that's the kind of stuff that the banks do to you. They're not your friends, folks. Don't keep anything in a safe deposit box. And as far as investments are concerned, I'd look at a jaundice eye of any banker that's giving you investment advice. Where is their loyalty? Is it to the bank, to you, the company they're selling the product to? You need to find a, a planner. Look for the word planner. Advisor is not a planner, folks. Okay, You're going to pay for what you get. There's not many planners out there. I'm retired. I'm done. I did this for 27 years. And I've showed you all my certificates and everything. So um, you need to be able to come out of the other side of this um, of this uh, this recession slash depression we're in right now 
you need to come out of it with assets. If you're holding gold and silver, daggone it, don't get rid of her anything. I'm okay with swapping gold for silver, provided you get at least 80, uh, 80 units of silver for each one unit of gold that you exchange. And I'm okay with swapping fiat for silver, but I'm not okay at this point for swapping silver for silver. You're going to go backwards in that regard. The job is we always want to be continuing to moving forward. Okay, so central banks are, are buying gold and we have a, a, sh um, a chart we'd like to show you here. Take a look at this. So you're seeing that as the amount of debt. OK, uh, the amount of debt increases, the amount of debt that the central banks is interesting to hold, interested in holding is going down. So we just move our cursor around up here where the um, where it is up here. OK, you'll see that the amount of excess treasury issuances without major barrier buyers is going down. The central banks, well, they're not the major buyers anymore. What are they doing? They're buying the gold. You see the trajectory? Okay. Now, it isn't going to take much time at all to completely wipe out all the gold that is available. All right. So as the U.S. stacks debt, the rest of the world is stacking gold. What side, what country do you want to be in? What, what philosophy do you want to embrace? Do you want to collect debt? And what is a dollar? Is a dollar actually an asset or is a liability? Is a, is a dollar a debt instrument? Let's remember this. Gold is the money of kings. Silver is the money of gentlemen. Barter is the money of peasants. And debt is the money of slaves. So let's talk about the risks that are involved with banks right now. The bank's interest rate environment. My gosh, it's going up, right? If it goes down, the dollar really can, it continues to be worth less and less and less. And that's what we're seeing. That's called a pivot. Rafi Farber talked about this. He said, when we see the pivot, we're going to know that things are going the opposite way. But the pivot wasn't the only thing to see. Remember I told you, and I long maintained about eight or nine years ago, I figured this out, that when this reset occurs, all currencies around the country are going to have to reset exactly at the same time. Otherwise, all the other currencies, the countries are going to want to gobble up that currency of that other country and take all their gold by holding their currency. So it's got to be. So right now, the BIS is controlling everything. What has to happen is Austrian monetary economics, God's money is going to have to come in and take over everything. I got to see some major changes. There's a lot happening as far as the uh, the upcoming eclipse is concerned. There's a lot of biblical meaning there. And I wanted to make sure that we got this out on a Sunday for you. So if you're afraid, hit your knees and pray. Everything's going to be fine, though, folks. There's a big plan. Plan has been very well thought out. If you don't have silver, you don't have gold, you'll be okay. You won't be able to do the nice things that uh, you could have been able to do if you followed the advice. For those of you who did follow the advice, I suggest you you hunker down and uh, you don't tell anybody what you did. You don't tell anybody where your money is because you are your own bank now. Gradually, what's going to happen is all this is going to change. And we're going to go back to the way things were and had been from 3000 BC, monetarily speaking, to 1871. Okay, we're still going to wheel that stuff. <laughs> we're not going to go back to caveman days. But uh, certainly the, the money is changing. Okay. So we have some slides we want to show you to get into talking about um, what a 10 year yield, 10 year yield uh, runs, a two year that we've already covered. But I'd like to show you what a, um, I'd like to wrap this up, conversation, part of the conversation up with what a normal yield curve looks like. So we're taking a look here in PAL. Basically, had this money in February. You see that second dip here right after 2024? That's when Powell came out and said, oh, we're going to keep the interest rates the same. Guess what? They dropped them right then and there. Now, why do you think they did that? Probably to help out their fat cat guys get out of the some of the positions that they'd wound up in. But we're also seeing that the two-year yield, two-year is holding a higher interest rate than the 10-year. That's what's called an inverted yield curve. Let's take a closer look at that. This is a normal yield curve. So as you go out on the on the uh, on the horizontal axis there, that's the duration of the loan. OK, so the longer you go out, the longer you want to borrow the money, the higher the interest rate rates. Right. So on the left hand side, OK, the vertical axis, as opposed to the horizontal axis, you're going to see the, the interest rates. So the longer you take out the loan for the higher the interest rates. Let's take a look and see what's actually happening here. This is an inverted yield curve. This is what's actually happening. Is it natural? Is it right that a uh, that a uh, that a uh, a ten year note or excuse me a, a two year note would carry a higher interest rate than a thirty year? Look at this going on out here, folks. Okay, let's go to the next one. Wow, this isn't this is a first. 
So in order to keep the money in the Fed system, as opposed to having to go out the Fed system, the Federal Reserve is actually supplementing the interest rate to get the money going into what's called the Federal Reserve reverse repo operations. So this is a special fund, a special amount of money that, they, that they're pulling in. They're consolidating everybody's money in the Federal Reserve reverse repo operations. And this at one point got up to $2.9 trillion. It's now below $400 billion. They're withdrawing the liquidity out of our economy, folks. It's exactly what happened during the Great Depression. So what you want to be doing, since the dollar is going to go down to zero, you want to be holding the money of your country, which is, which is finite, it's fungible, it's durable, it's a standard unit of measurement. Now, some of you are being told, oh, you got to buy this particular gold coin here because we might have it confiscated. No, folks, only one half of one percent of the people in the United States are holding any real money. There's going to be not going to be any confiscation here in the U.S. because they'd have to ring, knock on 200 doors to get one person that might have some silver or gold at that point. No, the reason why the confiscation took place in 1933 is because we were in a gold standard back then. The reason why companies are using this as an excuse to scare you into buying expensive uh, seven thousand dollar gold coins with an obscure print on it or, or stamp or whatever it's because they're very high margin, high profit. And that's one of the things I was upset about in talking with Pastor Belcher today. Is that there are people out there that are not putting your interest above their own because you're choosing people that are calling themselves advisors and not planners. You need to have somebody sitting on your side of the table. Think about that. You need to be taking uh, in investment advice and you'd be taking financial advice from people that know what the heck's going on. So what we're seeing here is the Federal Reserve is losing money for the first time in history. Is that a bank? Is that a currency you want to continue to hold on to? Oh, my gosh. These are the Treasury losses that are happening. And these can, can you just continue to pile up. So banks are losing money, specifically the Federal Reserve. They're, in, they're engaging in what's called quantitative easing. They're, good, they're in, lowering the interest rates is exactly what I showed you. When Powell said they'd stay in the same, they actually dropped them. You have to look at what they do, not what they say. I hope we can find that video and get that out because this is eye-opening. I'm sure they allowed it to come out. Basically, they're talking about behind closed doors, how the public ever found out that, um, that, uh, that, there, that there wasn't any money inside the banking system, banking system. They would all run. And like we said before, what did George Bush say? Now, it's rumored that George Bush owns a very, very large bank that you know the name of. Bank, hook, line, and sinker. Of course, there's all kinds of subcategories and different ways to hide the ownership. Oh, goodness. So once all the M2 money supply has been gathered in our economy and centralized, then the switch will be flipped. But the one thing they can't flip, switch, switch the flip, flip the switch on is the silver and the gold that you're holding. Okay. Now, some of you are saying, geez, all Ted talks about is silver and gold. No, I'm talking about is exiting the system. Silver and gold is the way that you get out. I mean, does a surgeon sell scalpels? No. Surgeon does the job, right? And a scalpel is needed. In this particular case, I'm trying to save you from the natural ruin. Get your money out of the banks. Get Reduce the amount of cash that you're holding. Cash will be viewed as trash, folks. You need to be holding something that's the time, money of time, sound money. The money is going to stay with you and, your, and for generations to come. We're not out of the woods with this commercial mortgage-backed security problem here, folks. We're really not because these office buildings are not going away. And now you're going to have wind up with possibility of blight in these areas, high infestation of, uh, of rats and, and, and pests and, and homelessness and drug use and all that kind of jazz because the mispricing of money has brought tomorrow's demand into today. Five years of demand in two years ago. And now that's gone. That party is over. So now that you have your shekels, now that you have your dollar bills and everything all, all stacked up, now's the time to get out of the dollar bills and get into the real money. Lord, you know that you've been hearing about this. People are talking about Silver Lake. There's no tomorrow. You're listening to this right now. So what do we got next here? Let's go to the silver price now. You know, silver's breaking through $27 but it seems like everyone's asleep at the wheel. Nobody's noticing what's going on. What's going on, folks, is there's a mispricing here with the silver. Everyone can afford an American Silver Eagle. It's $32, for God's sakes. It makes a monster box 16000 or maybe $34 or whatever. You can afford one of these things. It's beautiful, and you'll have it forever. 
not as though I'm, I'm trying to encourage you to stat, to uh, to hoard or become a numismatic. Somebody collects money because of the way it looks and it's pretty. No, folks, I don't care what it looks like. A one ounce American silver eagle is a one ounce American silver eagle. 14 constitutional dimes, 14 dimes from 1964 is one ounce. Currently, you can get a bag of these things for around 20 some thousand dollars. At $20,000, you're looking at $2 a dime, 14 dimes per ounce. You're looking at $28 an ounce for constitutional money. I think that's a heck of a deal. So a lot of people are going to miss in the boat. Additionally, you're going to get 14 transactions out of each ounce of silver. So, and anyway, let's take a look at what's going on in the ETFs. My goodness, $17.1 billion withdrawn from an ETF. It's called, it's called an electronically traded fund, okay? Basically, it's a way to, to make it a lot easier for you to move your money. Or, um, is it money? Move your digital fiat? No, is it digital? No, it's not. Move your stock? No, you don't actually have stocks. What are you actually moving around? If it's not actually stock certificates, because you don't actually own the stock certificates, and it's not money, because money is gold and silver, and it's not currency, because dollar bills aren't moving around, and it's not fiat currency, because that would be the currency that's no longer backed by gold and silver, what is it that you're moving around? That's a really good question, I think. Okay. So, what's going on here? Public large is selling their gold. They're selling their gold through ETFs, but guess who's buying it? China. China is buying the gold hand over fist. We have some pictures we're going to take you and show you what's going on over in China. They're lining up in the gold stores. You guys are not. Now, you were lining up about a week or so ago when gold shot up. But look what's happening here. The way gold sold, is sold overseas is typically sold in 24 karat. So you go into a, into a gold shop and you'll see on the left-hand side what the price is per gram of the gold. And then... That's the price. Then as you shop around, you look for the different types of pieces of gold. They'll have a labor rate built into for the price per gram. So you'll be paying for the price of gold plus a rate, labor rate for that particular piece based upon the number of grams that the gold weighs. Okay, let's go to the next picture there. Isn't this an interesting way? Now, look at all the gold that these people are having. They're lines. There was one store that started up. They'd never been open before. It was a big mall. And I think it was the home of 30 million people in this one town. The mall opened up. They had this put police outside. They opened up on a Sunday. They had all kinds of turnstiles, uh, uh, basically ways to make the, the uh, help the, uh, the foot traffic, the pedestrians stand in line, proper lines. The line was a mile long. It was wrapped around the building. Take a, you should see some of the pictures that we, that we described to us in terms of the pictures wrapped around the coin stores of the places where we've seen. Okay. The People Bank of China bought approximately 255 metric tons, a quarter of all gold purchases by all central banks around the world. What do they know that we don't? What are they doing? Should we be holding gold or should we be holding paper? I'd rather be holding the gold. Although there's been no actual audit, there's a lot of supposition that maybe they're buying gold secretly and not telling us. You know, there's a slight disconnect between the amount of gold that China says it's been buying and the amount of gold which has been exported to China. I haven't got all the numbers in front of me. I can tell you a lot more gold when in the China than what they're telling us about. They're not being honest, but but do they have to be? Are you going to tell anybody how much gold and silver you have? No, folks, come on. Uh, -uh. They will have to come honest if they're going to be using currency against the gold or against the silver to back the currency. And that way we keep track of how much currency is issued versus how much actual metal or money has actually been uh, been put out in, into the public for use. So in China, I'm not only talking about the middle here, is, is been impoverished. The traditional way of saving in China was to buy apartments. So you'd have one or two apartments because you couldn't buy gold. And you couldn't buy silver over there. They wanted you in their system. So some people would buy three apartments, four apartments. The problem is, the trouble is, the real estate prices are crashing in China. Well, in fact, top of the, price, the fact that the buildings are crashing too. <laughs> they weren't built very well. The standard of, it's not really, it's not funny. It shouldn't be laughing. These people work their tails off and save. They're very pernicious savers over there. And they basically built ghost cities that will never be occupied. I don't know what the thinking was, but that's where they could told they could invest their money. That's, that's communism. That's not a free society. That's not where we are. We have the ability to take our money out of the banks and move it into silver and gold if we're smart enough to realize that that's what we should be doing. Now, the lemmings, everyone else sound asleep. Oh, let's just keep the digits in the, let's pile up that stock. Oh, let's move it into Bitcoin. Yeah, another aberration. Folks, if Bitcoin was real, if it was real, because they're telling you, oh, there's only 21 million of them, and you bought a Bitcoin, 
which Bitcoin number do you own? I mean, really, if you're going to spend 60 some thousand dollars on what Bitcoin, wouldn't you want to know what coin number it is? Okay, you're going to go in a, in the, and you're going to buy a car. Okay, you're going to go into the ocean and going to buy a car. We'll give you a heck of a deal on a car, but we're not going to sell you the VIN number. Is that okay? Can you buy a car without a VIN number? How do you title it? How do you own it? Do you own it? Who owns it? Somebody owns everything. Somebody owns something. Okay. So as the price of real estate crashes in China, guess what's happening to the people over there? Their dashes, their, their hopes for, for a bright future are being dashed, aren't they? So how are we doing here, folks? You guys hanging in with me? Yeah, so 326 folks watching. Wow. Congratulations. <laughs> I thought it might be boring some of you guys out there. That's encouraging. So please hit the like and the subscribe button. I know you hear that all the time from all these other podcasters. I'm new at this stuff, so I don't ask it that often. But if you like the material we're putting out, if you hit the like button right now or the thumbs up button, what it does is it triggers the it triggers um, uh, YouTube to say, hey, a lot of people like this. There's 300 and some people watching it and 300 people said it's great. We got to put it out to more people. Well, if you think it's great, guess what? It will be great. If it isn't great, don't hit the button. But if you don't hit the button, why well, are you still hanging around? But we got a lot more to cover. I'm glad you're not getting tired because we are far from being done. Okay. So we showed the pictures of the gold store in China. You'll see the prices of what the actual gold per gram is being sold for up on the wall. As you go in, then you look around and you figure out what it is you want to buy. You want to buy as close to spot as possible. You want to buy something then that doesn't have any much uh, craftsmanship involved in it. You want to buy something ornate, then you're going to have to pay for that. But it's a very simple, very easy way to be able to, um, uh, to move your money out of yuan and into real money over there. But these people, they have to buy jewelry, which I think is really pretty smart. Are they going to confiscate your jewelry? I saw one guy from India he made a 24-karat gold shirt linked shirt okay and he wore it through through a, a um through a metal detector at, a, at an airport and he got through and we're going to take a shirt off of him but that shirt had to be worth about a million dollars very heavy so a pretty pretty healthy guy too to be able to carry all that weight around so i've been looking at the last six months and nine months reports for jewelry companies out of asia there's a lot of jewelry shops and jewelry companies in Asia, many of which are quoted in Hong Kong. The sales of jewelry are up, are up to significantly 40 to 60 percent. That's because the people can now can buy it. Why aren't our sales of gold and silver up here? Uh, why aren't they up 40 to 60 percent? What do the Chinese people know that you don't? Well, now you got a Ted and you got Ted speaks and you got Ted mugs. And pretty soon you're going to have Ted head hats. They're pretty cool, by the way. Very, very neat. If you know, you know, it'll be written out on the back of the hat. And then very soon, we're going to have some of the highest quality shirts that uh, they're going to be sold at cost. We are not looking to make any money on any of this merchandise. All we want to do is get it out there, get the buzz going. We like to become a little bit like, and we know. People need to know that this is a place they can come for truth. We're not going to be endorsing any products by some guy claiming to be a doctor or whatever else that has a degree in sociology that's telling people what to do with their retirement dollars and selling Dory bars, and that's all they sell. So, no, we don't do that kind of stuff here, folks. Uh, we're going to rely on donations, and we're going to run this thing as close to the bone as possible so we can put the value and the information out to you. So once we get you wealthy by moving your money, helping you to decide to move your money outside the system, outside the Federal Reserve system, and into your own system, become your own bank, then we're going to help you understand the in nuances of estate planning. And some of the tips, a couple of guys have already written in the email, I said, Ted, some of the stuff you told me, the you have to book an appointment with an attorney and they're going to charge you between $250 and $850 to learn what it is you gave us for free on the internet. So please pass this along. Please hit the like button. Please hit the subscribe button. Help us get up there right now, folks. We need to have a bigger voice. And the voice right now, unfortunately, is being drowned out by some degree by people that are still hawking stocks and bonds and mutual funds and dirt that you don't own. Anyway, uh, jewelry sales, the World Gold Council says the jewelry sales are up 17% in the fourth quarter. Well, that's a lot. That's just one quarter. So you multiply 14 times four, and that's 68. So silver, gold sales are up 68%. So people in China buying gold jewelry, there's a second place where they can go to get the gold, and that's called the Shanghai Gold Exchange. Watch this. The Shanghai Gold Exchange is a physical exchange, and currently the Shanghai Gold Exchange has, has silver priced about $2 higher than we have the paper price over here. So 
if you're interested in creating an arbitrage, you would buy the silver on paper over here for 20, 25, 26, 27 dollars, whatever the price is they're, they're quoting, two dollars less than what it's quoted on the Shanghai Gold Exchange. So you buy the paper here, then you present it for delivery over on the Shanghai Gold Exchange, and you make the two dollar VIG per gram, excuse me, per ounce. Okay. Pretty easy way to do to make money. How long would that last, though? Is there any real value that that person's bringing in, or is actually what he's doing is shining a light on the extreme price manipulation that's going on? The manipulation, folks, has never been this bad. There are 395 people that think they own all they all own the same ounce of silver. So what that means is that now is the time to be buying the physical silver, not the paper. If you buy the paper, you're going to stand in line with the other 394 people. Because they all think they own the same ounce. If you're actually holding the ounce, those 394 people are going to bid an astronomical amount of money for that one ounce of silver that you're holding. Take it to the bank. It's called the law of supply and demand. Okay. You're holding the supply. The demand is 394 times what the supply is. Hold it. What did Ted say? Ted said the demand, okay, is 394 times the physical supply. Why aren't you guys waking up to this? Now's the time to get the heck out of the dollar and get into the physical silver. Now, I'm not saying you should buy bars or rounds unless that's all that's left. If that's all that's left, get that. Again, any type of silver is better than no silver. But the best type of silver to be buying is the silver that's the money of your country. Again, in the United States of America, it's gold eagles, it's silver eagles, and it's pre-65 dimes, quarters and a half dollars. Somebody out there saying, oh, Ted's wrong. Ted's not wrong. You ask, the, you ask the coin store. If you go into any coin stop or any pawn shop and say, look, if I sell you these American silver eagles here, American gold eagles, or do you have to turn and report to the IRS? And the answer is no. The IRS. That's interesting. How do you spell the IRS? How do you spell the IRS? Isn't it spelled T-H-E-I-R-S? Folks, it's right in front of your face. It's theirs. What does the IRS spell? Theirs, T-H-E-I-R-S. It's right in your face. They're making fun of us. We're trading paper. We're having heart attacks. Poor Jerry drove 17 hours in a truck. Can't walk anymore. He's got to go in the hospital because he can't, at his age, sit in that position because of all the stress and all the hard work that he's been doing all his life. And look what he's traded it for. Simply digits on a computer screen. And look what he's missing out on. It's my birthday, May 25th. We were going to celebrate it down there in, in Alabama. These are these are country folk friend of mine. I had a tick I pulled off of Bentley, put it in a plastic bag, put a little bit of uh, wet um, paper towel in it. And it, what happened was the female tick blew out the, uh, the, the the baby ticks. So I brought it down to show them at the camp, last campground. I said, Ted, what are they? I said, I got it. look like tick, ticklets to me. <laughs> You ever heard of a ticklet before? I hadn't either, but I made up the name for it. It was funny. So at any rate, where are we with this? 10 million people doing a small, very small percentage of the population. But the third way of people can buy gold outside of the Shanghai Gold Exchange called WeChat. You got to think about that. WeChat will allow you to buy gold as, as low as one gram. It's an open marketplace. The problem there is you need to make sure that who you're buying it from is reputable. And that's why a number of you guys are reaching out and say, Ted, why are you hawking on gold and eagle coins so much? Well, folks, they're celebrating their 50 year, year anniversary. They will not sell anything they do not have in stock. Meaning they're like, oh, well, we'll take your order and it should be in about four or five days. When it comes in, we'll send it out to you. Hey, Charlie. No, that's not the way we do business. That's not the way it should be. Done. You do not buy something they don't have in stock. Suppose you pay for it and it doesn't come in. No. If the guy, if the coin store or whoever you're dealing with doesn't have the stones to keep it in stock, I don't think it deserves your business. You need to know what's in stock, how much is it, and when they'll ship. And the bottom line is they ship within 24 hours of receiving your money. So, but anyway, WeChat is another way that you can look to get um, to get gold, but please, and silver, but please stay away from the electronic funds transfer, uh, electronic funds systems and the ETFs, any electronic way of holding your wealth, it's going to go like pff, vapor in the wind, folks. It's not going to be there. So we can talk about that and talk about that and talk about that. We're not going to do that. What we're going to do is talk about the future, not talk about the past. And the future does not include Bitcoin. It doesn't include Litecoin or any of these other things. Think about it. 
you think countries of the world are going to allow a private company to issue their currency, their money, whatever they want to call it, into a country's monetary system? A private company? I don't know what you're smoking, folks, but I don't smoke that stuff. Mm -mm. So, and anyway, we all know that gold and silver is going to go higher. So let's take a look at this next one here. Let's take a look at the debt compared to the gold. Okay. So people are asking, is my money safe if it's sitting in the bank? Well, let's take a look at this. So the gold, okay, is the price of gold that we're seeing. And the black is the amount of debt. Now, look, if you could blow that up a little bit on that right side for them, so they can see that the, uh, the price of gold has taken a dip compared to what the debt is that's outstanding. Okay. So you're saying the U.S. debt here is currently $31 trillion, $32 trillion. All right. Then why shouldn't the gold continue to track the debt if, in fact, gold is a representation of money, as the Constitution says it should be? Well, folks, you haven't figured it out on your own, so Ted's figured it out for you. The bottom line is, folks, you do not own what it is you think you own. Other people own it. The only way that you can own what it is you think you own is to go out and get the real money. Or go out and get an avoided deed and a perfected title or a land grant. Land grants were typically issued by kings. Okay, So once you're issued a block of land, it was called a land grant. It was given to such and such. And such. Then that person sold it off. Now, do you think when he sold it off, do you think he sold off the land? Or do you think he sold off fee simple or joint tenants with right of survivorship? What kind of title did he give to the land? Oh, he didn't give any title to the land. Oh, then who currently owns the land? Who does own the land? Very interesting question. So look at the gold price catching up to the government debt. And the chart says it looks like gold could reach $2,300 by the end of the year. Well, that's already happening. I see the needle has finally moved. Gold confiscation is nothing. It's going to happen again. Much to the chagrin of those dealers trying to sell high cost obscure $7,000 gold coins that the person that you're going to be trying to negotiate them with will have never seen and is certainly not going to recognize it for multiples of what an ounce of gold really should be costing. The confiscation, which did happen in the past, was because the currency at the time was backed by gold. It's not backed by gold anymore. Now, once we get fully backed by gold, we wind up with another rotten administration that comes in. And they decide to put the gun to our head and said, give us your gold. Or we're going to pull the trigger after they try to take our guns away again, which we're not going to do because there's more guns in the United States than any other country. We have the largest military from gun owners and NRA owners. We'll keep the rest of you knuckleheads that don't know what's going on. We'll keep you safe. Don't worry about us. We know how to use guns. Nothing happens from somebody that said that is a licensed gun carrier. The problem is it's from those that are unlicensed. So why do you want to unlicense us, the people protecting you, when the cops can't get there in time? Make any sense? Don't get me mad about that. So back then, the currency was, go was backed by gold. The government had gold obligations, didn't have enough gold to meet its obligations. So it stole the gold from the people that had it for 20 bucks and re revalued it 15 my gosh, that's a 75% increase right off the bat. So I guess you play by the rules, and guess what? You get burned. So we're going to play by the rules here, folks. Some people will be saying, you know, if the debt isn't real, and you never saw any gold or silver trains hands, why wouldn't they take a home equity loan and max it out and go buy gold or silver? Well, I can tell you, I can't tell you to do that because I'm a licensed or formerly licensed certified financial planner. And it's against the law for us to recommend that you use debt to invest. But the banks can do it, right? Don't they use debt to invest? Absolutely sure they do. So the end of the confiscation stuff, let's be done with that. It's not going to happen. It happened once. It's not going to happen again. It was a one-off, okay? They're never going to cheat in the elections the same way. They're going to find another way to cheat, okay? So it's always something different. You got to stay on top of things. You either stay on top or you fall behind. There are people that, that, uh, that wonder what happened. There are people that make things happen right? Like me. There are people that watch things happen, like a lot of other people. And then there are people sit around scratching and wonder what in the heck happened. All right. So the fact that you're out on the leading edge, you're taking control here, you're learning and you are taking action because you know that knowledge without action is completely worthless. What's the sense of knowing a lot of stuff that could benefit you if you don't put it to use? So now I'd like to speak a little bit about that. I've long remain, uh, remain, maintained that the first country to back its currency with gold would have to be followed by the rest of the countries. And that is what just happened on Friday. Zimbabwe decided to back their currency with gold. And as a result, 
Now it's game on, folks. Because the smart people around the world, the foreign exchange traders, the FX traders, they're going to be on that keyboard first thing Monday morning, looking to exchange their worthless fiat dollars for the Zimbabwe dollars earned by Zimbabwe, backed up by their gold. Now, what happens if they take those Zimbabwe dollars outside the country and they buy up all the, the, the currency that the country has? Is that very fair? How long is that going to last? That's not going to last. So again, you're seeing the machinations of the wind down of the Keynesian economic system that's been run by the Bank for National Settlements for over 150 years. You're also seeing the end of price manipulation. JP Morgan found guilty three times, found guilty three times, and then violated on the fourth occasion to come clean what's called a deferred prosecutorial agreement. So after paying 900 some 40 months on 940 some million dollars, almost a billion dollars, where'd that money come from? It came out of you, your pocket. If you're buying and trading and going back and forth, it came out of your pocket, folks. So again, the government is not working for you. I'm working for you. We work for each other. We help each other. That's what life is all about. Okay. I think personally that God put all of us on this planet to see what we're going to do. We gave all of us different problems. We're going to see whether or not we're going to help each other or tear each other down. I think the people in this group, you guys are great. We're not having the kind of problems that we have in other groups uh, that, that I'm seeing. So we had some ankle biters early on that tried to take some snipes at us, but we whacked them away and they're gone now. You don't see them popping back up again. But all the people here, you guys are lovely, great people. I appreciate you all, really from the bottom of my heart. And as long as you support what we do, I will continue to bring you the truth and you are going to continue to learn new things each and every day. So I know the program has been a little long in the tooth here. We've been covering a lot of information, but there are a couple of things that I want to make sure that we cover not the least of which is the upcoming eclipse and the upcoming cicadas. Now, this might seem weird to you folks, and I don't know what the deal is, okay? I don't study that part of it. Maybe you need to talk to Bo Polney or, or some pontificator like that out there that, that, that studies God's timing. But there certainly is a lot going on, a lot that we don't know that's going on. But uh, I would venture to say that something monumental is going to be happening on Monday. Typically, when we have an, an eclipse of this nature, there are earthquakes, and uh, didn't we see an earthquake just happen at, at Rock, New York? Does anybody know where the epicenter of the earthquake was? Did you know that that earthquake epicenter was in Bedminster, New Jersey? And whose golf club is in Bedminster, New Jersey? What actually happened up there? Interesting. Three kilometers deep? That's not, uh, that's not very deep. Ten kilometers is typically where it is. Okay. So again, let's get back to the solar eclipse here. Let's talk about this. The last time this type of solar eclipse happened was 222 years ago when Thomas Jefferson was president of the United States of America. So the solar eclipse is generating all kinds of trouble or all kinds of, of, of uh, worry. And emergency services breaking out now. Kentucky has declared emergency status. So is Wyoming, Arkansas, Ohio, Ontario, Canada. Colleen, Ohio, Missouri County, Charleston County. This is a picture here on April 3rd of lightning striking the Statue of Liberty, the torch of the Statue of Liberty. And now we have five days later from this, we have an epic eclipse happening. Now, of course, actually what's happening is, this, is the moon is coming between the sun and the earth and it's going to block out the sun for a little while. But folks, it's not just that. There's a lot of meaning behind this. And um, I'd suggest that you maybe uh, uh, do a little more research on this. There's a couple. There's a couple things I put out. There's a YouTube Rumble uh, out by Tommy. Excuse me, by Scotty Mar Ten. Okay, if you're interested in this, reach out. I think it's called Caged Elephant. And at the six minute mark, you need to read. You need to listen to that. Lady brings out some passages in a book that you never read before, but it matches up exactly what's going on, even the days. So again, it's it's a Rumble, Scotty Mar Ten. The M A R and the number ten, okay, and the, um, the 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 show you want to watch is the one that's called Caged Elephant at the six minute mark, okay. So Jackson County is closing and declaring an emergency as well. So be careful, devastating earthquake is long overdue on the New Madrid fault line. Last time it happened was 1811, right after a total solar eclipse which had its path of totality on the fault line. Same thing is going to happen on the 8th of April tomorrow. That's why I wanted to come out here now, folks. 
I don't know what's going to happen tomorrow. It's a high possibility. It's a probability. Okay. Anything's possible. It's, I think the probability is higher here. You talk to a lot of other people out there that, that have been studying this a lot longer than I have. I have studied money. I study Austrian monetary economics, and I compare that to Keynesian economics. I know what's going on. Now, as far as the biblical references, I'm not real good in that regard. That's why we get with Dr. Pastor uh, Nars Belcher at the Church of the Open Door. Okay. But something is going to happen on the 8th. And the, uh, the solar uh, eclipse, I think it's going to be at uh, 2.23 Eastern Standard Time in the United States here. So let's see what happens. But it's very interesting. It seems to be making a cross of some type. And there's one biblical scholar that's taking a look at two of the um, of the Hebrew letters. And uh, you might want to do a little bit of study on that. I'd rather not get a whole lot of decal, decal, uh, de <laughs> detail on that right now. But uh, anyway, folks, it's been a little over an hour here right now. The last thing I want to cover is the cicadas. You're going to think I'm crazy, but there's a guy out of the University of Connecticut who is a cicada expert. His name is John Cooley. And he's saying that what's happening right now, there's two generations of cicadas, over 100 trillion cicadas. Typically in the past, they would eat uh, they would eat crops and destroy crops and everything. I don't know what's going to happen this time. But I do know that they are very, very noisy and they can wake you up. So, folks, I want to thank you very much for joining us. If you haven't hit that like button, please do that. Please go on the website and uh, order your mug. They're cost right now. They're not going to get any cheaper than that. And um, it's one price for the shipping. So you can get three, four, five, six, seven mugs, whatever you want. They're at cost. You're not going to get them any cheaper. And they're brand new. They're not second. <laughs> used mug. <laughs> Come on. We're not selling used mugs. Who said that? <laughs> no, no, no. They're, they're brand new in the box. They'll be shipped directly. <laughs> used mugs. You guys are crazy. <laughs> All right. So at any rate, um, tell the people about us. We're going to have uh, hats. We got renditions coming up. You're going to really like the hat. So please like, um, share, subscribe. Get a hold of our, our silver chart here. How many ounces of silver do you need to be in the game? This will be around after April 8th. And I'm going to pull it up and say, look, I told you you should have done this. I was out there. Okay. So if you're needing bars, eagles, junks, or you're interested in the silver show, I got some sad news about the silver show, folks. We had everything all lined up and we had it set up at the gateway and I don't know what happened, but uh, they yanked the contract from us. So the gateway is not open to us in Atlanta. So what we're looking for right now is I think we're going to embrace our friends a little bit up there in Canada. You know, when life gives you lemons, you make lemonade, you put a little sugar in it, you bring the people down from the North up there in Canada. Come on guys down. We're going to have a lot of fun. Uh, we're looking to have it in Minnesota. So a little bit closer for you guys, a little bit cooler for us. Maybe we'll have in September, uh, but that's where we are with this thing. I'm sorry it happened. I don't know why, but um, if you guys like and subscribe and you pass us around, you'll give us a bat. We can make these people pay attention and we can get them to honor their word. Okay. So anyway, Ted here signing out. Have a great week. I'm going to be watching and seeing what's going on tomorrow. We still have tomorrow's mailbag. We're going to be going over into questions. But thank you so much from the bottom of my heart. I really appreciate all the nice things you're all saying. I think you get it. I think you understand what I'm doing. There's no money to be made here, folks. The only thing we're doing is trying to help you make yours. And then we. the second part is to help you plan it to make sure that it stays in your family. I'm sure all of you would like to see 100% of your assets stay in your family, right? If you don't plan, it isn't going to happen. Because whether you plan or not, you already have an estate plan. It's one that's designed by your state. It's designed for intestate people. And it puts your family and puts your needs at the bottom and puts the state's needs and the lawyers above your own. So stay tuned, folks. We've got a lot more coming. It's going to be a fun trip. Take out the new ad that we did, a new uh, new message we just put out on the on the, uh, on the the website, tedspeaks.net. We redid the thing about the road less traveled, the way I've lived my life. So the majority of the crowd is going to, to, the, to, the, to the left. I'm going to the right. Now, yes, I've gotten some scrapes and bruises and I've had some snakes try to bite me ankles and you've seen that happen, but I'm still here. I'm healthy as a get out and uh, uh, we'll see you tomorrow. God bless you. And I love you too. Amen.